What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu slash unity. In this video, you are going to learn the one thing that you mustn't forget when you are developing with unity. And that is the tint mode. I'm going to show you how to avoid loads of problems that you might face in the future where you edited something while you were in play mode. And that is really messed up if that happens. So you can avoid that by adding a visual cue, which you are going to learn in this video. And consider liking and hitting the subscribe button if you feel like this is something that will help you to save hours of your time in the future because it really takes a second to hit those two buttons. So let's get started with the content. In this video, I would like to show you something that is going to be quite important and might save your time, quite some time for you in the future when building your games. So let's look at the following situation. So we're running our game and then everything is getting grayed out a little bit. So you notice that the areas where you could make changes are getting grayed out and the game window pops up and you can see the game, right? So now, if you make any changes to your object, let's say you make changes to your player here, you can still click on your player even if you're in game mode. So now, well, this button here at the top is blue, it means we're in play mode. So once we're in play mode and we make changes to any object, any game object inside of our scene, this change will only be effective for that particular play mode. So for the execution of the play mode. So let me demonstrate what I mean with this. Let's say we want to change the X position of the player to something like five. And now let's stop running the game and we can see we're back at the default value. So the changes that we just made during play mode, they didn't take effect. So they were just gone afterward. They're not staved. And that's really the point here. So let me show you once again by moving this left wall. So let's say I changed the position to minus 10 and now let's say I would make the ground a little wider, something like 18 and reposition it a little bit on these X axis, something like this here. You see, now maybe this is what I want. Maybe I'm happy with this now. So I'm playing in the scene mode here. I'm playing around with it, find the right spot. So minus 1.5 in this case would be a good spot. And I would reposition my player a little bit as well, like so. And then let's say I'd be happy with this. But the thing is I'm in play mode and I don't even really notice it because I still can make all of those changes. So once I stop the play mode, I realize all of my changes, they're gone. And now in this case, it was no problem because it were only a couple of minutes of changes or even like three steps or so. But imagine you've been working on your changes for hours for like, I don't know, four or five hours, the whole working day without testing anything. You were just really like playing around and cha making changes, making changes and you didn't notice it. Well, all of it is gone. All of your work is gone. And in order to avoid that, what you can do is you can go over here to edit preferences and then search for colors here at the top, select the colors, and then you will see the different color settings that you have. And there are plenty as you see, but the one that I'm most interested in is the player mode tint. So this is something that you can change to your liking. So let's say I want to change it to a pink color like so, or maybe something less aggressive. Let's, let's use this bluish color here, like very teal or something like that. And now let me run the game again. And you can see the unity editor turns pretty bluish. So now I'm on the safe side because whenever the color is like this, I know that the changes that I'm making will only be relevant for that particular execution of the game and they will not persist. So once I stop running the play mode, it will be gone. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Go to edit preferences and make sure that in colors, you change the play mode tint to a color, which is aggressive enough where you will notice that you are in play mode and changes won't be permanent. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you're one step closer to becoming a Unity game developer and if you haven't liked the video yet, please do so now as well as subscribe and also make sure to follow along in the playlist to become a real Unity developer. And if you want to fast track the whole development process of 
becoming a developer, then definitely check out our Unity Masterclass in which you're going to build a bunch of games and while doing so, learn everything you need to know about game development and, well, have your first couple of projects under your belt. So check it out. The link is in the description below. You will get a huge discount and I hope to see you in the next video.